So we're continuing now with the day uh, 62 assignment called hybridization, although it's really more on BSEPR. And we're now on uh, problem 9-24, which is on page 385 in your textbook. So the problem says the figure that the figures that follow, so these down here contains a uh, figure that follows contains ball and stick drawings of three possible shapes of an AF4 molecule. So what AF4 means is it's some generic central atom, but the they're telling you what the outside terminal atoms are, that they're all fluorines. So A, for each shape, give the electron domain geometry on which the molecular geometry is based. Okay, so it's AF4. Um, okay, so if we look at I, and if we look over here, um, that's the geometry that you see right right here, that square planar for I. Um, for two, that's going to be tetrahedral. So we would come back to this page right here. Tetrahedral would be this one right here. And this is a seesaw, but they didn't turn it on its side. So it looks like this, except uh, the one they show in the book is turned up on its side. So that would be the um, geometry. So we'll go ahead and write that down. So they want the electron domain um, geometry on which the molecular geometry is based. So for the first one, this is going to be 924. Okay. So the first one we said was square planar. So the electron geometry on which it's based is an octahedral. Okay, and you can um, sketch each one of these. So, and they would have lone pairs on top and lone pairs on the bottom. So that's I. Um, then the second one would be um, tetrahedral. Okay, and that's going to be like this. And you have one going away from you that way, one going away from you that way. That's what the dashed lines mean. And then a thicker line coming like that, which means it's coming out towards you. And that's tetrahedral right there. And then for three, it's going to be seesaw. And they draw the seesaw up on its side, but it has two axial and then it has one going back away from you like that, one coming out, it's a thicker line because it's coming out of the page a little bit. And then you have the lone pair on that side like that. So those would be the three. All right, um, B, for each shape, how many non-bonding electron domains are there on the atom A? So you can answer that from what we just did. So 924B. down here. We see right here we have two non-bonding pairs that's on a square planar so it's an octahedral but it's missing two of the atoms so there's two non-bonding um, for one. Okay for two it is none, zero, that's tetrahedral. And for three, uh, we see that there should be a lone pair right there. Don't draw in your book, but I just did in mine because I own it. So there it is, lone pairs right there, so it's one. Okay, there you go. All right, so that answers um, B, C. Which of the following elements will lead to an AF4 molecule with a shape in three? So this one. All right, so what you have to do there is you have to figure out that each of these fluorines is gonna have an octet around it. So that's eight, 16, 24, 32, and then you have two more lone pairs is 34. So, 
for 924C. Okay, so let's skin draw it. And this one's going away and this one's coming out at you. Not directly at you, but kind of out of the page in other words. And then this one's here and this one's here and then there's lone pair right there. I am totally off the screen. There we go. Okay, so I just redrew what's in the book. Okay, so this one's gonna have an octet, 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 octet. So that's 32. And then you have two lone pairs there, so 2E minus. And so that's gonna give you 34 E minus, okay? So if these each have um, 32 and that has that, so what you gotta figure out is fluorine, there's four fluorines and they're each gonna contribute seven. So look at your periodic table, they each contribute seven, so that's 28. We need to get to 34. Therefore, this mystery number here has got to be six, and there's only one. So one times six. So what we're looking for is something that has six valence electrons. And if we look at the choices they give us here, um, we can see that, um, look at your periodic table, you'll see that sulfur and selenium, S and SE, have six valence electrons. So that would be the answer. So sulfur and SE can be the mystery central atom. The others cannot, they don't have the right number of electrons. Okay, so that's the answer to 24C. All right, next is uh, D. Name an element A that is expected to lead to AF4 structure shown below. <clears throat> so what we would do then is, um... <clears throat> okay, I'm back. Um, name the element A that is expected to lead to the AF4 structure in one. So what is that? That's square planar. So they want it to look like this, going away that way, going away that way, then coming out at you so it's a thicker line, coming out at you this way, so it's flat. This is a square planar. And what that means is it has a lone pair up here and it has a lone pair down there. So how many total electrons is that? There's gotta be an octet for each of these fluorines here. So the fluorines are going to be four, times eight equals 32. And the um, there's four um, E minus, so there's four of those. So that means there's 36 total electrons, one, two, three, four um, lone pair electrons there. Okay, so there you got 36. So you gotta say that Fluorine is 32. So, excuse me, fluorine is, let me start again on that. Fluorine, there's four fluorines there, one, two, three, four. Each one has seven electrons, so that equals 28. And then we have the uh, mystery central atom A. We have one of those times some number is going to equal some number, and we have to total up to 36 total electrons. So that means this mystery number here has to be 28 plus some numbers 36, that has to be eight. So it has to have eight valence electrons because there's only one of them and that has to be a noble gas. So of the elements that they gave us it would have to be xenon, that's the only one there that's a noble gas. So the answer is Xe. Okay, These are kind of uh, fun problems, they're little puzzles and you just kind of figure out what, um, what the missing um, elements are that they, of what they give you. Okay, um, and that was D actually. So C was, this was C, this was D, sorry. So that's D. All right, so let me just put that on the screen one more time for you. That's C and D right there. And if you have any questions, come in and ask me about those. Okay, next up is, 920, excuse me, 932. 
So we're going to move over to there. And that's actually down a little bit. Okay, so 932. pH 3 is, is uh, pH 3 molecules polar. How does this offer experimental proof that the molecule, molecule cannot be planar? Okay. Okay, so this is 932A. They want to know how pH3 cannot be planar. So let's do a Lewis dot on it. So phosphorus, you have one of those. Go to your periodic table and you see that phosphorus has five valence electrons. Hydrogen, you have three of those. Periodic table tells you there's one, so there's three there. So that's going to be eight. So now we draw it, P, and you draw it as symmetrically as you can, although on XY planes, don't, don't draw things at angles. That's not until you actually know the geometry of it. So it looks like that. So we've got to distribute those. So it's just going to be pairs all the way around the phosphorus. Okay, so right there, that's your uh, Lewis dot for this. It's, it's um and it's an AX3E1. And you go to your table. Um, and find AX3E1. Uh -oh. okay, AX3E1. And there it is right there. And it's part of the tetrahedral um, electron geometry domain, but it's missing one of the um, atoms. So it has a lone pair, just as we showed. So that means it's going to be trigonal pyramidal. In other words, these lone pairs are going to push these three um, bonding pairs down because they spread out. Remember, these, these things spread out, these lone pairs, and they push these guys down like that. Okay, and this one also goes down. So they have a much, they have less than 109.5 degree angle, which is what the tetrahedral does. Okay, so that's the answer to that. So, um, okay, almost any time you have lone pairs on a central atom, you're going to have um, some sort of a, well, it, it won't, it definitely won't be planar. So, I'm just going to put lone pairs, create a pyramidal, not a planar shape. And that's going to be trig pyramidal. Okay, trigonal pyramidal. Okay, there you go for that. All right, next one is a 932 is B. It says, it turns out that ozone, O3, has a small dipole moment. How is this possible given that all the atoms are the same. Well, it's let's draw it and let's see why that would be. So this is uh, 32B. And it's O3 is what we're talking about here. Okay, so the question is ozone, why, does it, why is it polar even though it's three identical atoms of oxygen? And if you draw the Lewis dot structure, it looks like this. It's got a double bond on one side, a single bond on the other. That makes it a resonant structure because the double bond could have just as easily gone on this side. So that's a resonant structure. But what it does have is, and this is what uh, makes things polar, it usually is lone pair on the central atom. That'll bend the molecule. So if we look at our table, what is this, first of all? It has three electron domains, but two of them are bonding. So that's an A, X, two, those are the bonding. E, one, that's the lone pair. Okay, so if you come to your table, you look at that, and you see that right here, AX2, E1, that's part of the trigonal planar family, but it doesn't have one of the atoms. So therefore, it's a bent molecule, and that's gonna create a dipole. Um, that, that will create a dipole um, because the electrons are being pulled in not a linear direction, but um, they're, being, they're being pulled equally, but they're not uh, being pulled in a linear direction. So uh, the bent molecules will have a dipole to it. Okay, so 
so it's bent and has a dipole, meaning there is a polarity to it. Okay, and um, that's that. Okay, we move on. And we're now at 940. 9.40. Okay, 940 is to draw sketches illustrating the overlap between the following orbitals on two atoms. So they want uh, two 2s two orbitals on each atom. So these are fairly straightforward, um, although this gets into hybridization we're going to deal with in more detail when we get back to school. So this is 940A. So if you have two S orbitals, you're simply, they're spherical and they're simply going to overlap. So this is a 2S and this is a 2S right there. Um, that could be, for example, um, lithium uh, with two, with, uh, that could be a lithium molecule and that would have two bonding 2S orbitals like that. Okay, next one is 940B. And it says it wants uh, the 2PZ orbital on each atom. Assume that the atoms are on the z-axis. Okay, so that's very simply going to be um, this. If, if, the, if this is a nucleus of one of them right there, this is a nucleus and this is a nucleus. This line straight between them is called the internuclear axis. And it's assuming that this is the Z axis. You can label axes any way that you want. And if you remember that a P orbital is shaped like a potato. Has one side going that way and one side going that way. Okay, and then you got another P orbital over here. It's got one side going that way and one side going that way. Now these two will kind of overlap and add and make this, this center one a little bit bigger, but that's basically overlapping of p orbitals. And um, there's no hybridization there. There's just two p orbitals that are on the same axis and they can overlap. So now the third one is asking you to sketch the 2s orbital on one atom and a 2pz orbital on the other atom, and that's just simply going to look like this. And there's the nucleus of one atom, and there's the p orbital on the z axis. And then here is the 2s from another atom. So this is 2p, z, 2p, z. Remember the two, does any orbital any subshell has two lobes to it. So the Z orbital, PZ, for example, has two lobes. And I should have written this up here. So this is 2PZ, 2PZ on one atom, and then 2PZ, we'll call this atom A and atom B. And this is 2PZ on the A atom. Okay, so that's what they're looking for there. And one more to go. We're going to skip 949, as I told you. We're going to cover that in more detail next week. So we're just doing 944. And so that takes us over here. Why are there no sp4, sp5 hybrid orbitals? Okay, so let's talk about that. So 944. nine point forty four. And why are there no sp4? So if we look at how orbitals hybridize, we start off with this. We have a 2s, and this is with no hybridization. We've, we've done this in class a number of times. And you have 2p, and this is the px, and this is the py, and this is the pz. Right there, okay? So to have hybridization, what you have to do 
is have, first of all, you start off, you have a full 2S orbital. But something comes along that wants to bond. And if it's just a, if it's two additional bonds, you're going to need two orbitals at the same energy level. So right now we have one orbital at a lower energy level that's full and three that don't have any electrons to share. Remember covalent bonding, you have to be able to share. So what we need to do is promote one of these up here. So it goes up there like that. And so it's going, I'm not, I actually don't want to draw it there. So what I want to do is redraw this over here. So what we now have over here is an orbital that's a little bit higher than the 2s and it's called the 2sp and you get two of those you started with your your what you're doing is mixing these two you're putting them into a bag and mixing their energies together so you end up with the same energy so yeah you, you started off with two sub orbitals here subshells so you got to end up with two subshells 2sp okay so that was made up of these right here what happened to these? They remained unhybridized. They did not become part of that mixing process. Why not? Because we're bonding on two sides with an orbital that only needs two bonds. So I'm gonna give you an example here in a second, and this is PZ. So for example, carbon dioxide. Okay, it only needs, the oxygen only needs to bond on two sides, so it only needs two hybrid orbitals to do that. It only needs two orbitals. It ha these have to be at the same energy level. They aren't at the same energy level here, so you have to promote one and then make these two be at the same energy level um, up here. And so that you got it like that and like that. And the other electron's gonna come in from the carbon and from this carbon and it's going to bond with that okay next up um you could have um you can have a 2s so i'm just gonna we don't need to go in the whole detail of this right now but you can have a 2s and if you have an electron already here And I didn't draw these quite as far apart as I did up above. Let's say you already had an electron there. Then this can get promoted up to here, but then you have to make these energy levels. Again, I don't want to draw it there because I want to show you over here. Then these three energy levels can hybridize. You already have one of them that has one electron in it. So what I'm going to make now is a 2sp. We're assuming we're in the second orbital. That's what the p means, two. And I got another 2sp2 and another 2sp2. A lot of students get confused. They think this is two orbitals because of the two. What it means is an s and a p and another p. That's three orbitals. You started off with these three at different energy levels, and now you have three at the same energy level that are somewhere in between 2s and 2p. Okay, this one remains unhybridized, so it's gonna stay up above and be pz. Okay, and now you have an electron there, electron there, and now your other atom from the outside is going to come in and bond by putting a um, downward arrow in each of these, and that's going to create a 2sp. Finally, the third one is you can have 2s up arrow, down arrow, and then up here you have px, py, and PZ. And if these two already have an electron, then, and you need to hybridize, this is when you need four bonds, such as a CH4, where you have four different bonding um, domains, then this is going to get promoted up to here. And what you're going to end up with is four equal orbitals. They're closer to the P than to the S, because you've all of a sudden, now you have three of the four orbitals involved, or P orbitals, only one is S, so they're kind of closer to this level. And so that's going to be, assuming they're in the second a row that's going to be two that's going to be two s that's going to be two s p three two s p three these are all equal two 
sp3 and 2 sp3 all equal energy levels so one of these got promoted up to there so now you have this 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 and this and now if this were methane for example ch4 this is the carbon all hybridized so it has four equal energy levels and what will happen is a hydrogen will come in here 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 and here and contribute an electron and form CH4, which is methane. The question is asking, why can't you have an SP4, SP5? Because you simply don't have enough P orbitals. You only have three P orbitals. You'd have to have a fourth and a fifth P orbital in order for that to happen. So it's kind of a long answer to a short question, but you should understand the reasoning behind it. Okay, that takes care of this video. We're gonna get more into hybridization next week and something called molecular orbital theory. And um, that's it. So um, try to have these done by the time you come back to school because this is a fairly long assignment and um, it's due on Tuesday. So have a nice rest of your holiday and nice Thanksgiving and I'll see you on Monday.